everybody, uh, and uh, Professor Ian and my old boss, Professor Lou Landau, thank you very much, and Rhonda Tourbrook, thank you very much for this very kind invitation to speak to you. I've got about 15 minutes. So, <laughs> so, so, Lou, thank you very much, and I think Lou has set the scene for what I'm going to talk about. Well, briefly, uh, uh, who am I and how did I get to be standing here? Well, I, like many of you, very fortunate to have been born here in Subiaco, educated at Claremont, went to the University of Western Australia. And while I was a medical student, I did what any young football player would want to do, and I was headed for a life of general surgery, uh, and I thought I'd be a general surgeon in the Kimberley, that was my goal. Uh, I had no interest in obstetrics, I, had, I didn't even know what the word meant, it meant pregnancy and delivering babies, you know. And, uh, but I got to King Edward, and, but, and the one thing that was missing in my, in my training had been that as a young boy, I was very interested in explorers. I read lots of books about explorers. And, um, I, but I, I don't comments left with the North Pole and the South Pole. I don't like being cold. I wanted to be an explorer, but I didn't want any inconvenience. I, I, I didn't want to be cold or hungry. And then I found a book called Lassiter's Reef, Lassiter's Long Lost Reef. Do you know about Lassiter? Yeah. Yeah. So Lassiter found a gold reef in the middle of central Australia. He came from Melbourne, he thought he knew where it was, he went back to Melbourne to raise a big expedition to go out and find it. People thought he was mad. He died out there, but I thought that reef's out there, I'm going to spend my life looking for Lassiter's Reef. I, I declared that to my family at dinner, and my parents said Lassiter was a madman. You cannot devote your life to pursuing the delusions of a madman. <laughs> but when I got into at King Edward as a medical student, I learned that the unborn baby is referred to in the, in the textbooks as the passenger. There's the power, the passengers, and the passenger. The power is the woman in her uterus, the passenger is her birth canal, and the passenger is the unborn baby. And as I saw these babies being born, they all looked different. Some were fat, some were thin, some had clearly not had enough oxygen, some were covered in blood. And I thought, what's happened in there? And after a while, I started looking at these babies, and I said, where have you been? What happened in there? And what does it mean for the rest of your life? I asked my teachers what it meant. What, what's happened in this nine months? What does it mean for the rest of your life? And they said, well, we don't think anything, and, and no one's interested. And there was almost nothing written. I knew agriculture knew a lot about this. The, the health of the mother is very important for the offspring. But in humans, pediatrics begins at birth. Our birthdays begin on the day we're born. So I decided that here was the undiscovered continent, which I could explore for my life without getting, without getting uh, cold or hungry. But I, I you get very tired, so it's not true. And I, and I became a bit of obstetrics, and then the field of fetal medicine, medicine young boy baby, was just starting. There was a fellowship at UCLA in Los Angeles, so I went off with university support uh, to go to Los Angeles and train. And I came back to the first fetal medicine position in Australia, which was at King Edward Memorial Hospital. So I then wanted to work out how, what does it mean? So what does it mean in the nine months before birth? So the answer to that is to study a large number of people from about 16 weeks gestation, women this long, uh, for life. And the RAIN study, the RAIN Foundation, sorry, that Luke just told you about, the estate left by Mary RAIN, her first entrepreneurial successful, successful businesswoman, uh, what was interested in studying the origins of disease in humans because she married Joe RAIN late in life, they had no children, and Joe RAIN had a stroke. And on his deathbed, Mary said to the family doctor, Dr. Carl George Eck from North Perth, I'm the wealthiest woman in Perth, this is 1958, I'm the wealthiest woman in Perth, why couldn't you have stopped my husband from dying with a stroke? And he said, because we don't understand the origins of disease in humans. And she left her estate two years later in 1960 for that purpose, to the new UWA Medical School, founded with Rotary support uh, in 1960. So the, the proposal was accepted, but I'd like you to know that the grant application I wrote in 1988 as a junior young boy, just come back from overseas, no one knew who I was, would never have been funded if it weren't for Professor Lou Landau. So Lou Landau was a professor of paediatrics at the Children's Hospital, and Lou was a great support. Without your support, Lou, the RAIN study would never have happened. Ooh. Bravo.
So the Graham study was the world's first pregnancy intensive lifetime, lifetime cohort study. That means we recruited 2,900 West Australian unborn babies at 16 to 18 weeks of pregnancy to study them for life. Uh, they're now 30, 31 years of age. Are there any Rain study people or families in the room? But Jackie, you were in the Rain study. You're a mum? I was a mum. You're a mum? Right, yeah. excellent. Great, thank you. So, so basically there are 2,900 such people around here in Perth, uh, and it's four generations. So the people, the fetuses we recruited at King Edward for over a two and a half year period, uh, are generation two, their mums, Jackie Kent et al, are generation one. Your parents are now generation zero, and 550 offspring are now generation three. This is the world's first pregnancy intensive cohort study it's the largest of its type in the world. No one can ever catch us. We have 30,000 pieces of information on every participant in the RAIN study. It's brought $26 million in grant funding to Perth. There are 200 scientists worldwide who work on the RAIN study, uh, and, it's, and, there, and 550 publications, it's 550 stories that have emerged. So very briefly, the RAIN study has shown exactly what it means to be, be, be before birth. So, Little baby, where have you been? What happened in there? And what does it mean for the rest of your life? But we now know. So the programming of our metabolism, our propensity to put on weight, our propensity for hypertension, heart disease, diabetes, our behaviour, our appetite, our, our ability to be successful, our ability to maintain relationships, our ability to keep away from the criminal legal system, are all heavily determined before birth. So the interaction nine months before birth with things that have preceded in the family genetically and early childhood all interact to make us who we are. So the University of Western Australia in collaboration with all our universities and, and our major research institutes under the banner of the RAIN study have, have answered that question. So that is a truly great contribution from the people of Perth. Perth is the place to do it, of course, and the beginning of this grant application argues why this study should be done in Western Australia. Because what is the great strength and great weakness of Western Australia? Isolation. Isolation. So at the heart of your greatest weakness will always be your greatest strength, and at the heart of your greatest strength will always be your greatest weakness. Our greatest strength is, our greatest weakness is our isolation. John, why would you want to go back to Perth? Where did you see that is? You know, why would you want to go back to Perth? It's so isolated. But at the heart of that weakness will be our greatest strength. And that, and we now know from the COVID-19 yeah. pandemic that this truly is our greatest strength. But for running population-based studies with lifetime recruitment, there's nowhere in the world as good as Western Australia. And the RAIN study shows that in spades. So that was, that was the relationship between life before birth and the importance of life before birth for the rest of our life, but that's not treatment of disease. What emerged was a, a strategy to prevent the major cause of death in young children in our society and all society. What is the single major cause of death in young children? What is the major cause of death in young children? Cancer? Starvation. Accidents. Accidents? They are tiny in comparison with the major cause of death. That is being born too early. Mm. Preterm birth is the major cause of death. What is the major cause of uh, a neurological disability and lifetime disability in young children? Being born too early, right? So preterm birth is the single greatest cause of death in young children and the major cause of lifelong disability. So being born too early needs to be our number one priority. Why is, it, why is it not our number one priority? And why does such an intelligent, well-educated group of Rotarians not know the answer to the question? <laughs> and the reason you don't know the answer to the question is because it was always assumed you can't do anything about the time of birth, and hence it's not even on the list of the cause of major causes of disease. So we know that preterm birth rates can go up if you do various things, and that's another story. So what can go up can come down. So the rate of preterm birth across the developed world had been rising from about 5 to 8.5%, much higher in many communities, 11% in the US. Uh, but we need to do something about it. This is by far the most important thing we could do in my field of work. So it had always been thought you can't do anything about it, but in 2014, 
I thought we had enough research data from ourselves and other people to launch a program across our wonderful West Australian community, desert on one side, ocean on the other, treat it as an island, launch a program across the whole population, make sure everybody got it, everybody understands, and to see if we can lower the population rate of preterm birth. We launched in 2014 with partial permission from the government. Uh, basically, they didn't know what to go to the Director General and say, I'd like to lower the rate of preterm birth. So, fine, good job. But what is preterm birth? So, a lot of, a lot of not, not knowing about what it is. But anyway, so we launched the program in 2014 in Broome, in the Kimberley, deliberately, because Kimberley is our number one target, a very high rate of preterm birth. Indigenous Australians have double the rate of preterm birth of non Indigenous Australians. Uh, and the program consisted of seven interventions, which I won't bore you with, but it involves ultrasound, education, and some uh, medical treatment, which is going to go on the PBS during this year. So we launched it, and we had a big, we had a big public health campaign called The Whole Nine Months, and if you want to read all about it, go type in The Whole Nine Months into Google, and you'll see, you'll see the program. We made sure that everybody in Western Australia understood it, so I, I led a an outreach program of a junior obstetrician and a senior sonographer and a midwife. We talked in all the regional hospitals, all of Perth's hospitals, to make sure that when we launched this in, in November 2014, that the entire state, including the women, would know what we were doing. We launched it with a big fanfare, and then we waited to see what happened. Well, in the first calendar year, we lowered the preterm birth rate in Western Australia by 7.6%. So that was the first time anyone had lowered the population rate of preterm birth. In King Edward, we lowered it by 20%, and we've kept it down at that rate. So since then, we've kept the King Edward rate down by 20%. Various parts of, of Perth where we have where we stopped our programs, the intensity of our program, it's reverted back to the rise that it had before. We're very proud that in the Kimberley, we dramatically lowered the rate of preterm birth. And one of the major treatments of this, of, in this program is a drug called progesterone. Progesterone is expensive, and the Kimberley made it free of charge. So the only place in Australia where this medication is free is the place in Australia where it had its greatest effect. So the cost, cost of treatment is expensive. That we then got funded by Canberra to roll it over, over across Australia. So that is now the Australian Preterm Birth Prevention Alliance, all six states and two territories. The ACT are about to publish that they've lowered their rate by 10% and 34% in the, in the late preterm birth category. We're about to get very good news from Tasmania. So the West Australian program is now being rolled out across Australia and is starting to work. So this is the first national program to have been conceived, developed, trialled in Western Australia and then rolled out nationally. And I hope you're as proud of that as, as we certainly are. So that is, that is our rate of preterm birth. So we know we can lower the rate of preterm birth by about 20%. We've got 80 to go. We have a lot of research running uh, at King Edward in collaboration with St John's and Subiaco and various other parts of Australia to get the other 80%. We, we know how to get probably half of that. We just need to prove it and then roll it out across our nation. So that's the preterm birth story. So I've talked about the rain study, about the preterm birth story. I've only got a few seconds to go. So, because I'd like a little bit of question time. And, uh, and that is, I'd, I'd just like to say that King Edward's going to be moving, as you probably know, thank you to the Chinese demand for iron ore. <laughs> uh, $1.8 billion has just been put in a trust account by our government, a non-touchable trust account, they tell us, uh, <laughs> to relocate King Edward to the Charlie's campus. Now, it's not a new idea. The, the, the decision to move King Edward to the Charlie's campus was made in 1968. And the, and the committee called the Moody Committee was established in 1968. All my career, King Edward's been moving to Charlie's, but now it looks like it really is happening. I think one of the things that precipitated it was 